In this video, we're going to develop the long run average cost curve for a business and use it to explain the concepts of economies of scale and diseconomies of scale. The example which we are going to use to help us make sense of this is a fishing boat. The fishing boat that we're going to hire holds five fishermen and to hire it for one night costs $1,000. For each fisherman that I take with me, I have to pay them a wage of $100, and each fisherman will catch 10 fish. If I have one worker, I need to pay them a wage of $100. I also need to pay for the boat, which is going to cost me $1,000. So the total for one worker will be $1,100. So the total cost will be $1,100 and the output which they are producing, we said that one fisherman will catch 10 fish. So for my output of 10, my average cost is going to be 1,100 divided by 10, which is $110. So the average cost of here at 10 workers is going to be up here at 110 and we'll put a dot in there. If I was to hire two workers, the boat is still going to cost me $1,000, but the wages of the two of them combined is going to be $200, and my total cost is now $1,200. But the cost of the boat is now spread across two workers, and as a result, the average cost is going to come down. So if my total cost is $1,200, and I produce uh, an output of 20 then my new average cost at an output of 20 is going to be $60. We can see that the average costs are starting to fall as I get as I get as the business grows. As I move into 30 workers, actually 3 workers, but 3 workers producing 30, uh, 30 output uh, 30 fish worth of output the three workers, the total cost is $1,300. I divide that by the output of 30, and now I get my average cost falling to $43. This will continue on with the average cost of four workers falling to $35 and falling to $30 for five workers. Eventually, this boat is going to be full, and we said at the start that the boat holds five fishermen. When I get to uh, my sixth worker, I'm going to have to hire a new boat. So for six workers, I'm going to need two boats, and that's going to cost me $2,000. I'm going to have to pay six lots of wages, which is $600, and my total cost is $2,600. When I divide that amongst the, uh, the output, which is up to 60, the average cost will be $43. And this happens to businesses as they, as they grow. They might need to hire more managers and pay salaries of managers. Uh, they might need to buy more equipment. They might need to upgrade their premises. And their average costs are eventually going to start to rise. There is another issue to consider in this, uh, which didn't come up in our example, but in, uh, in the business, the fishermen, when there's more fishermen, they might start to catch less fish uh, each worker might catch less fish because there are other fishermen around, they're competing for the same fish, they're on the same boat. So each worker might not be dragging up 10 fish each night anymore. Uh, and so this will also lead to a decrease, uh, an increase in average costs once we get to a, a certain size. When we connect the dots, we end up with a long run average cost curve, which is a U shape. And this is typically what a long run average cost curve will look like. So we've shown how a long run average cost curve is constructed and we found out that the general shape of the long run average cost curve is a U shape. As we move from this point in this direction, average costs are falling. In this area, the business is experiencing economies of scale, and that refers to the cost advantages of increasing the size of your operations. When average costs start to rise, 
then the firm no longer experiences economies of scale. It starts experiencing what we call diseconomies of scale. So in this range of the long-run average cost curve, the business experiences diseconomies of scale. The optimum point for the business to be operating in is at the lowest point of its long-run average cost curve. This means that the average cost of their products is at the lowest it could possibly be, and for a business trying to maximise their profits, to minimise their cost is uh, what they're trying to achieve. So, this is what we call the optimum plant size, which is the, the, the best size for the operations of this business. From the output of zero up until 50, the firm is experiencing economies of scale. And once we reach 50, we're at the optimum plant size. Once we move past the optimum plant size, the business starts experiencing diseconomies of scale.